Good afternoon. In this video, we're going to dive even further into statements. So the last video, we talked about if statements and the choice statements. And now we're going to start looking at iteration statements. So iteration means it's looping or repeating so many times. And each time it repeats, it's called an iteration. And it's typically you hear that in a computer programming phase. But basic statements that we have for our FANUC Robotics is while do while and for. So we're going to go through each one of these and we're going to do a scenario in the actual robot cell. So a while statement comes in, you have a condition statement much like you would have an if statement, but inside here, if the condition statement is true, then it will continuously repeat itself until that condition is not true or becomes false. So unlike the if statement where it goes into the if statement and then does what it needs to do and then jumps out, the condition statement repeats until it is false. So let's create a actual while statement, which will look a little bit different than an actual while statement that most computer programmers are used to. So inside our robot cell, I have a register2, which is my counter, and I set that equals zero, and then I put in my home position being the point register number one. So we're going to do a repeat on this square since I have them saved to a point register so I can easily go through it pretty quickly. And then we're going to have it repeat so many different times. And we're going to make it equal to a certain register uh, how many times it's going to actually repeat. Now there is no actual physical while statement so you have to create it off of an if statement. So the first thing we need to do is add our repeat. So I'm going to go new instruction, jump, and label. We're going to call this just label one. Okay, so that's where we're going to repeat or loop back to the initial item. Then what we want to do is we want to check to see if the register two is equal to whatever number we are at or the register one equal to how many times we're actually repeating. So I'm going to go new instruction, and then I'm going to go if, and I'm going to go if equal to. So I'm going to say if register2 is equal to, say, 10. So we can repeat 10 times. Now, this is something called hard coding. And when you hard code something, it makes it more difficult to actually modify later on because you would have to go to every single line of code that you want to change. Now, what's nice about coding is instead of putting a hard number like 10, we can go in here and go choice and then go register say three okay so is equal to register three now if i go to data and go under registers using three for speed uh, in another program so let's go to say register four so when we go back to edit and we're going to change this to register four which is going to be my counting number or the number of repeats so let's go back to data go down to register number four and i'm going to call this repeat number so repeat number so now whatever i put in here is going to be the number of times it repeats so if i put say 10 it's going to repeat 10 times if i change this to 5 it's going to repeat 5 times so instead of changing it in each line of code or how many times i want to repeat i can now not hard code but make it a variable in which i can change in only one place to the top so let's add that to the top ecdm insert one line and let's go new instruction registers equal to so we're going to go register number four is equal to whatever number we want to set it at so when we went to data we hard coded it inside there so we can modify that to any number we want so say i want to repeat it five times so now it changes that register number four from ten which we put in to now five so inside here we're going to do our if statement so if it is equal to five in this case we're going to jump to label two so then this is the checker if the checker is true then we're going to jump outside so making it say false. So let's add our point registers. So I'm going to go down here. I'm going to joint down to my first position, which is choice number 10. So I go choice, point register number 10, which is my first position. And then we start adding my different positions. So that goes down to the first point. This is to the second point. This is to the third point. This is to the fourth point. And then this is back to the... Okay, so I'm going to go in here and we add my point registers.
going back to that beginning. So I still add my point register, but number 10. So now that we have those numbers, we're going there. So let's speed this up just a hair bit. So I'm going to now add in, go into choice. We can switch it to millimeters per second or centimeters per second, or we can use a register to set this. So I'm going to use register number, say, 5, and we'll set the speed that way. So I always like to make things so they're not hard-coded, so I can easily manipulate or change these numbers in one place. So now that I have this here, I'm going to now change it up here. Register equal to register number 5, which is now going to be my speed, and we're going to set that equal to, let's say, 500, which will be 500 millimeters per second. There we go. So now it's going to go around 500. So now I can just change it here and it'll automatically change it down here. It's a nice thing about having the registers or variables. All right, so back to our while statement. So here's our label. And if it happens, it'll jump out of our while statement. Um, if it's not true, we're going to continuously on here. And then I'm going to bring this back to the beginning, which it is. And then I'm going to go add instruction, jump label, jump to label one. So we're going to repeat. So if it's not true, then we're going to jump to label two. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to add a label two to this section right here. So now we're repeating, repeating, repeating until this is true. And then it moves out of the while statement and then right here to label two and then it ends our program. So I always like to repeat myself and run through the program just talking out loud because if you notice that we are not counting our counter here. So what actually would happen is we would remain at zero and then want to continuously run, run, run because nothing's being added to our register. So we need to add a line here. So I'm going to go insert one line and we need to add one to our counter register. So we're going to go new instruction, registers. We're going to add to a register. So we're going to add to register number two, or make over register number two. We're going to take the previous number in register two, and we're going to add one. Okay, so now we're counting, and we're adding it to that zero. So now it should actually count, and then it'll count up to our register four number, which is five, and then it runs through. So let's try this out. There's our count. The second time running through, third time running through, fourth time running through, and then fifth time running through. And we're going to jump back, label two, we may want to add a uh, go back to the home position. So we just insert a new instruction, insert one line, and let's go to the home position. Choice, point register number one. There we go. So now we're going to go up to the home position and then we end the program. So this is basically how to do a while statement and because there is no while actually physically in the instructions, you have to make it with an if statement and you modify it. So now what we're going to do is we're going to now look at a do while statement. And what a do while statement is, is basically a while statement, but flipped. So it does the body first, and then it checks the condition statement. So how this is important or changes the while statement is what with the while statement, it checks to see if the number is added before it even does the instructions. Whereas this one, it runs through the instructions first and then checks. So no matter what, this will run at least once. And with the while statement, it's not a guarantee that it actually runs. So basically, it's pretty easy to program. It's the same exact thing here, but we just move the checking line down below right before it jumps. So I'm going to copy this program. So I'm going to go select, and I'm going to go over. I'm going to go copy. And then I'm going to copy and add in my words here. So I'm going to go do while, and then I'm going to hit enter on that. Copy, yes. And I'm going to go inside that program. And I'm going to cut out my if statement. So I'm going to go ECDM, and I'm going to go to copy and cut. And this is what I'm going to select. I'm going to go cut. And then we'll go right before we add one to the register, we're going to add it to our line right above it. 
So I'm going to go paste, keeping all the same information, and now we have our do while statement. So no matter what, it's guaranteed to run through it first, and then we have our line here. So example would be if I change my register number two to say six. So if I go in here and I go select, hit escape out of here, oops, and I change this to six. Now technically if I was in the while statement, it will not run, but because I'm in the do while statement, it will run once. All right, so before we run this, let's do one more modification right here where it says if register two is equal to register four, then it jumps out. Now, because we are going to put in a number that's higher than that, this is actually going to neglect and it's going to continuously run, continuously run because we're not counting from the bottom. So instead of going equal to, we're going to go if register two is greater than register four. So greater than equal to register four, we're going to jump to label two. So now let's try this. So let's go cycle start, jumps through, and it should count once, and then go back to home. There we go. So it ends our program. So here, it runs through guarantees, no matter what that register is at. So if I go register, say, 4, starting at 4 here, it will run our set number of times. So go down, runs through, there's 1, adds 2. So we're at five, and now it comes back up. So again, depending on how our register, the do while, if you want it to run at least once and then check, do while is better, putting the if statement at the end. If you want to check to make sure that if it needs to run or not, then you do a while statement. The last type of statement is going to be our for statement. So a for statement is basically you're running something for set number of times. So it's for a number inside of between a range of 1 and 10. So you want to repeat 10 times. So it's much like a while statement, but you're actually physically calling out, we're going to do this so many times, instead of setting up a register or doing a repeat with an if statement. So FANUC actually has a for statement. So let's go inside our program and let's create a new program. So I'm going to just go select, and I'm going to go to create. we go let's go inside that program and once again I'm going to just set up my register just in case I need it register number two we're going to set that to zero and then I'm going to add a multitude of lines to here so maybe 10 so the premise for a for statement we have the four and then we have the register or the constant number that we put in um, and then we're going to do a two so from two to this so this number to this number, or this number down to this number. So there's two different options in between here for the two. So let's actually create this object. New instruction over to the for, and we're going to do a for loop. So for whatever number, so we'll say register number two. So we'll go register number two, between what number and what number. So we could do a constant or we can do a register. So I'm gonna just go constant. I'm gonna go between zero to a constant 10. Okay, so between zero and 10. Now what's nice about the for loop, I don't technically need to put in this line of code here setting it equal to zero because this reinitializes register number two to zero and then it's going to count automatically so I don't have to add the add one to the end which is also a nice thing about the for loop. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add my movement. So I'm going to go up here, I'm going to add my home position first. So I'm going to add point and then we go register number two. One is my home position, and then down here, I'm going to start adding my lines of instruction so that I can go down to the correct position. So that's down to position one. Then I'm going to go to corner number one, corner number two, corner number three, and then back to corner number one. So I'm going to go here, choice point register number 10, and then I'm going to use point register number 11 for this one or position register. I always call them point registers. And the last one is going to be 13. And then we're going to go back to 10. 
go. Oh, forgot to add my position register. There we go. Now with that for loop, now we need to add the end for loop. So we're going to go new instruction, arrow over, and then we have the end for loop. Now notice how I don't have a counter, so I'm not adding one to register number two at the end like we did with the while statement. It automatically knows that this is a for loop. For loop automatically adds, adds a one to each of the number counts. So it's going to start register two at zero. So even if I delete this line, it doesn't matter if I do or not. So I'm gonna just go here and I'm gonna just actually, just to prove it, let's change this to six. So it starts out at six. Then it goes home and then it's going to reinitialize register number two to zero. And then it's going to add one to that all the way up to 10 and it's going to include 10. So let's try this out and let's first, before we do that, actually, let's do a position to home at the end. So we're going to choice point register one. There we go. So notice how we don't have any jump statements. We don't have any adding of one. And this will work the exact same way as the while statements that we worked before. So let's run this. Oh, we got our speed. So let's actually speed this up here. So uh, which one did I use for speed? Register five. So when you go register five here, turn on the teach pendant, register. There we go. And let's just kick up the speed just a little bit more here. Let's go maybe 800. So we go through here pretty quickly. And let's go back in the program and let's run this again. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Goes home. There we go. So we did the exact same thing we did with the while statement, but with a heck of a lot less code. So this is a very clean way to do a repeating object over and over again between whatever number you want or whatever number you want to end with. We can also count down. So if we want to change this from 10, we can count down from 10 and then I can go choice down to two. So I can go 10 to two. So it counts down from 10 and then sets it to two. So just to show you on the screen here, let's go shift display and let's go double. And then let's put the data set on here and let's move it up so we can see our counter. Here's our counter right now it's at 10. So it's going to set it at six and then it's going to reinitialize it to 10 and then it's going to count down to two. So it should end at two. So let's run this just to show. There you go, six, and then it's counted 10, then next it will be nine. And it's going to go all the way down to two. So you can either count up or you can count down. So very powerful programming aspect. Saves you a lot of time and a lot of jumping. Because anytime you have to program a bunch of time, there'll be more likely that you make a mistake. So there we go, the counter ends at two. So that is the iteration type statements that are in FANUC Robotics.